Good morning everyone and welcome to sunny Lithgow. A bit overcast but ah oh well, it is winter. Anyway, I'm just introducing you to Kenneth, the 1969 Alfa Romeo 1750 Bellina. Now I know you're going to scream, why Kenneth? Not very Italian name. Well the reason I'm calling him Kenneth is because that was the original owner's name who had this car from 1969 until around 2006 from the Rego papers I've got. Uh, he moved to Queensland some stage then and took it with him to Queensland. So Kenneth Allen Owers was the original owner. He bought it from Alec Mildred in Sydney, uh, Artarman to be precise for the Sydney people, and uh, he lived in Ride and he had it from New. And now it's mine. Well, he's mine. Anyway, so as I said, 69, 1750. I'll go for, go for the bonnet straight away because I've got it open ready. There we go. So there's the Alec, Alec Mildren service or uh, dealer information. Alec Mildren was a racing car driver. He used to race Alfa Romeo and he was a distributor for New South Wales and Queensland. And here we have the lovely little twin overhead cam. 1750cc motor which drives a five-speed gearbox to the rear wheels absolutely lovely now i'm not going to do a driving video today for the very simple reason that regrettably the clutch master and slave cylinder have gone so i have to pump it to get the clutch to operate you can get a couple of changes and then you have to pump again uh, it's a bit awkward to drive so i've got new parts coming and once they arrive we will uh, get those fitted or I'll fit those up and um, we'll get it on the road because I, I've driven it around the block it's absolutely delightful I must admit and I'm really looking forward to taking it for a proper drive I just I love the design of it you know okay it's not the coupe it's it's the four-door Bellina or sedan and uh, anyway I don't care I love it and to me it's more useful for me as a, uh, a sedan I've got more room in it Anyway, let's have a look inside. Eh? So I'll just open the front door here. And we have a very nice and original dash. I'd love, I don't know if I can get you a good shot, the two little frog eye instruments sticking up in the air there, looking at you. And then, of course, you've got all the centre ones. Now, they all work except for the clock. The clock doesn't. So, of course, it's right twice a day. And your five-speed gearbox standard H pattern with reverse below uh, fifth and passenger side lovely little woodwork a dealer fitted um, Australian Ferris radio uh, it's not push button it well it powers up I haven't really tried it to be honest and of course from 1969 in Australia it will be purely AM only now this leather wrap on the steering wheel wouldn't have been original but I don't care it's been very well done it would have just been the black, as you can see here, the black hard plastic. Later models went to a uh, wood rim, fake I think, but wood rim. It's got all its carpets, which are all a little bit grey, but apart from that, fine. Seating's all excellent. A yeah. little bit of showing a little bit of age, but hey, tell you what, who cares? You know, so it's missing a lot of the stitchy on the driver's seat, but that's usual because the driver's seat's the one that gets used the most now we're back now honestly great for kids i'm not even going to try and get in it so i'm not going to do a hub nut and sit in the back or any of the other tests um it has got clap hand wipers too by the way they do work um we might try them later we'll see we'll keep going around him it's running just the standard steel wheels, which again, I like with the hubcaps. Um, and whilst it has plenty of tread on the tyres, the tyres are actually 15 years old, so they're going. And what I've got is a full set. I'll just quickly take you back into the garage and I'll show you. I've got a full set of Pirelli Cinturatos in 165HR15. Now, the current tyres on it are also 185, so they're a lot bigger. So I think she'll uh, be a lot better and easier and lighter to drive as well. Um, once I've got the correct tyres and good tyres, because these have gone rock hard. Now, the boot. Oh, look at that little back, 
back shot there. Very pleasant little back. Very nice. Now, we, some people, particularly the Europeans, are going to wonder what these reflectors are here for. Um, the number plates, Italian number plates, of course, were large and square. So they actually mounted there, 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 and there. Um, our number plates are long and thin. So, of course, they don't mount that way. So they put reflectors in, which work quite nicely. You open the boot up. And you've got a, quite a nice size boot. That's my little storage tub of tools and a few bits and pieces. I always keep one in the car. Uh, under the floor we have an even older tyre. Now this, this one is not the 165 of the original. It's not the 185 of the ones that are on it. It's actually a 175 and it's 21 years old. So it ain't going on the road. Uh, anyway, I've got five new ones so that's alright. You've got little lovely position for the jack right up the back there but at least it's in out of the road um, in in my little box of tricks here move my bags it came with a tool roll but I don't really think and it's a nice tool roll uh, but I don't think it's the original tool roll because as far as I know they literally had a roll but I'm not going to argue the point um, you know as I said it's a nice little tool roll so that'll do the job quite pleasantly um, and then I carry spanners and sockets and screwdrivers and things anyway. Uh, I always carry on parts in older cars. Um, I've also got one of those small uh, starter battery packs to go in in the space there. It's inside, I haven't bought it out yet. That little mounting there is where the tool roll would go, but this one doesn't actually roll up. So that's why I don't think it's the original one. Anyway, I'm going to put cheat and put a bit of velcro underneath the uh, underneath the on the base of this just the hook section which will grab on the carpet and stop it sliding around we'll do that later on so what else have we got to show you on this one a little fuel door there which doesn't lock it's just a pop open one with the cap inside and again you know all the hubcaps you know the hubcaps themselves are, I love them just with the Alfa Romeo around the sides. Small metal caps, really good. Passenger door's a bit ugh, sticky, but apart from that, of course we've got the, the famous uh, uh, keep fit windows, or, or as some people would also like to call them, air conditioning. Oh, we've got a bit of a chip in there. Nothing major, it's not sharp. Somebody's obviously tried to close it on something. And we've got the little quarter windows, which, Turn around and blow the breeze right up back on you. Now, in typical fashion, somebody has mounted at some stage, um, and I believe well after it was new, a, um, we'll just go around the other side and I'll show you, a, uh, oh dear, oh dear, external rear vision mirror on the, on the car there. And whilst it's nice and it works, it does have one issue, and that is simply... It fails. <laughs> Not unusual. <laughs> so you can't open this all the way around on the driver's side. So, but that's all right. This window obviously is open because I've just put my hand through it a couple of times. Uh, I think all the windows work. I haven't tried the back ones actually. Oh yeah. Driver's side one. Oh, that's as far down as it goes. That's it. No more. And of course the obligatory ashtray. One on each door. Go back. Oh, my God. Actually, I haven't looked in here and see if there's any treasure. Oh, hello. No, it's a bit of foam. Thought there might have been a treasure down there. It's just a bit of foam. Part of the seat, I'd say. Uh, I haven't lifted carpets up to see if there's treasures under the carpets yet. Passenger door. Side door. Again. Oh, yeah. Wine's down all right. Oop. As far as it goes. Same as the other one. Ashtray. They all look unused. This one, no, a bit of foam, yeah. And then we've got a little parcel tray. Now this, I was on the understanding that these parcel trays, oh, I probably just waved that camera everywhere, I'm sorry about that, uh, were something, well, parcel trays, these armrests came out 
and then you um, had another pad that would sit in there for when, uh, if you wanted to carry three people, or in this case, three kids, because as you can see, there ain't much room. I'm not gonna get in, but if I put my leg in, I probably could. Well, I'm in, but there's not much room. <laughs> I haven't got both legs in yet. There's not much room. Now I do have little lights here at the moment. I've checked all the globes. There's a little button on just inside the door jam there on both front and rear. There's a two-way switch here, but I can't get any light out of that. I haven't tested circuits or anything. I can't find an individual circuit for interior lights. Um, hang on, we'll try and extricate myself back out. This will be good. I'll probably end up having an ass over tit. Hang on. Oh, made it, made it. I don't think I'll do that again. Uh, what do we? Oh, my sticky door. I've got to do, sort that one out. So there's always some little thing, but I don't mind that. And we'll get in the passenger front. So we've got a little ashtray here. Now, this is a cigarette lighter, but it doesn't come out. And I don't know why. There's like a, a release button on the end, but it doesn't, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna force it. Oh, hang on, no. Now it appears to be pulling the whole fitting out. So, I won't do anything with that. Little glove box, which I've already got stuff in. It's actually quite deep, but very small opening. And, oh, it worked. And a little parcel shelf under there. Obligatory string back gloves. Bonnet release there, and a small air vent. And the front speaker, with I think a uh, fader, front to rear because there is a speaker on the rear uh, parcel shelf as I said my little ferris radio I haven't got the key in so I can't uh, can't even power it up at the moment two stalks this one's headlights Ta oh bonnet light just went on uh, and the boot light would too because the boots open so we've got parking lights and then your main, and then your dip beam, and then we've got high beam. That's simple. And then I believe it might flash that way. Anyway, and then your indicators. Oh, they work without the ignition. There you go. So they work with a satisfying little, uh, nice little tick, tick, tick. As I said, it's got its lovely little instruments. Taco on the right, Speedo on the left. Total distance, which is really 98,839 miles, <clears throat> so 98,000 miles, and I believe that's true. I found uh, a couple of uh, registration papers, certainly in New South Wales, the uh, mileage each year is recorded, uh, and you know the car's in too good nick to have gone 198,000. Um, you've got warning lights on this side, which for the life of me, I've just forgotten what they are. Uh, this one is oil here, oil pressure warning light, even though you also have an oil pressure gauge. That one, I can't think what it is. This toggle, no idea. Nothing. Uh, no idea. I'll have to hunt that one up. I know these three toggles. This is your wiper. Oh, and they look. There you go. Clap heads. And I think they're two speed. Yes, they are. Uh, the middle one from memory is your instrument lighting and as far as I know it's only got two positions so it must just be on and off the right hand one is the blower for the uh, heater but that again I'm not getting anything on so I don't know um, this one underneath here is the reset knob for your um, uh, trip meter which I have reset so it's currently showing 0.6 that's as far as I've driven it um, and under the dash on this side you've got the the shorter one is a uh, hand throttle and the longer one is your choke for starting your key ignition and of course this is the best bit hang on I've got a bike going past 
We'll wait to get a bit of quietness and we'll listen to this warning to everybody outside. <laughs> very Italian, very Italian. Um, Non-original knob, it should just be a black knob. I'll stick it, leave it with this at the moment, but uh, I may change that just to its black knob. I quite like the black knob. Little parcel tray, handbrake, and your seatbelts, which at some stage have been converted to uh, uh, inertia reel. In the back, you've got the original Alpha fitment, probably dealer option ones, um, because in 69, certainly wasn't mandatory in Australia, uh, certainly not in New South Wales, uh, but they're lap only, that's fine. And we've got our two vents on the top that you can move around and direct air to where you want them for demisting, face, whatever. Combination of both, even supposedly side mirrors, but side windows, but I don't know about that. Little night and day mirror. A uh, sun visor on this side doesn't want to move. Sun visor on this side. Oh, oh, look, and a little mirror so I can uh, admire myself. Oh, this one's got one too. I can feel it in there. Grab handle on the passenger side. And of course we've got the little pull down dowager strap ones on the uh, back, both sides with the little light in front of it, which as I said, is not working. Apart from that, I'm just trying to think what else we've got to show you. Oh, and the lovely little Alfa Romeo, her badge there. And all the nice door furniture. Every, look, it's just in such good nick. You know, it's 50, what, 52 years old. And I just, I love it. I think it's just in absolutely beautiful condition. Um, yeah, everything seems to be good. Yeah, headlining's a bit dirty and there's some marks, but often they're glue. Uh, and it's got that lovely little perforated headlining, so I'm not worried about that. Um, back around. What else can we show you? Come back around the front. Uh, oh, sun's out. How about that? Um, fairly new battery, it's only a super cheap one, but it does the job. Um, and it's operational, so I've got a green with a red dot, but it, it works. It's got a bit of a dicky uh, starter solenoid, though. Sometimes you just got to hold it until it decides it's going to operate. A bit hard to see here, but we have the twin Weber. And from Bologna. And the, from memory, the, oh yes, there they are, 40, they are type 40s. 40 DCOEs. Uh, I can just see, don't know if you'll see that in there. Tipo on the top is 40, and then with more numbers after it. So, and there's the chassis number of my little Alpha, um, the power booster, and funny enough, that's the combined clutch and brake reservoir. The rear is the clutch, the front's the brake, it all fills together. I haven't had a good look to see whether or not there's a uh, divider in it so that you, if the clutch fluid does go, you keep brake, uh, some brake fluid. As I said at the moment, I have to pump the, uh, the brakes for them to work. The aerial that was fitted with the radio, I'll pull up one. I probably won't use the radio anyway because I like the sound of the car more than I, and the engine more than I like the sound of the radio. I've got an Alpha Owners Club badge on this side. I'm not a member, regrettably, at the moment, and maybe won't join. Not living in Sydney. It's a little bit far away. And on this side, we've got the Australian Racing Drivers Club. And in fact, on the key ring, we also have his ARDC membership for 7071. So, and the keys there, well, that's a Torino one. That one's made in Germany, so I think they're replacements. Uh, certainly the spare keys are, di are different. Um, can't get the reverse lights to work at the moment. I need to check the switch on the gearbox, which I'll do when I'm under it, replacing uh, the um, clutch master and, and slave cylinders. Now, one thing for a lot of people won't, won't realise is that the Alfa Romeo, this here, had bottom hinged pedals. Very light clutch, I'll tell you what, even though it doesn't work properly. Very light. You might just see that black button up in there. That's the washer button. Uh, it also starts your wipers. Now, I have given it a pump. Um, the wipers certainly started, but the washers didn't, so I don't know whether they're working or not. I'll check those out. Hanging's accelerator. So, yeah. What else, what else, what else can we talk about here? 
you know, it's all pretty good. This, we think it's had some paintwork at some stage, and you may not see them. I may not get be able to get it in this, and of course, this screen for me looking at it's too small. There are actually fine bumps under the paintwork there, but we think they're actually blemishes impurities under the paint when they've painted it there's also a couple of little bits here and there there looks like they've repaired a bit of a, a knock in the boot just here you can just see a bit of paintwork here but i'll tell you what you know who cares chips from lifting it up you can originally see little chip with the older paint under it so the the paint besides being as we would call it a white is actually called uh, and i apologize to any italians watching bianco spino which is a uh, white thorn i understand um so i think that's about all we might leave it there down there yeah, everything just looks fine on this car it's I tell you what, the, 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 the really short drive I took around, just around my block um, and I only used first and second gear because by that stage uh, when I went to change to third I'd run out of clutch and um, I had to, couldn't be bothered pumping it so I gave it a couple of pumps, put it in second and just continued around the block um, so I didn't bother going any higher gears but the gearbox all works beautifully and the car is just delightful, it's just got this lovely sound Actually, we can start it up. You might get to see, see the uh, the lazy starter solenoid. So we'll just put that in there. And see what happens. So you get the little yeah. So you've got your generator and oil light over there, and see, click nothing, and there it goes. <laughs> I'm guessing that's just a lazy solenoid. I'll I'll get that looked at. But yes, he just spurs away very nicely. Um, that lever is the hand throttle. So, I haven't sort of found all my throttle linkages and things yet. So, oh, there it is. Oh, no, that's the choke one. Why going in there? Uh, oh, there it is. There it is. Don't know, can I get to it? No, I might need something to prod it with. No, hang on. We'll just go for a quick tour, walk into my garage. There's little Marianne, the Diane under her uh, little cover. This blue cover here actually is for Kenneth the Alpha. And then of course, there is my Model T. Poor thing has not been out in ages. Um, either the weather's been very inclement um, or uh, I just haven't had time. You know, even though we're in a lockdown here in New South Wales or in Greater Sydney, and I, I'm not part of that lockdown uh, because I drive trains. Hang on for a second, we'll... Very nice. I'm always amazed at these incredibly thin Look at the seats. They're minute, but that's what they use, and in fact, you can still buy them with the special cap that goes over the entire distributor. And you see it down there, it's got the cap on it with a, a large clip. Yeah, so, plugs look good and new, they're all NGKs. Uh, VP6ES, which is, I think is the correct plug, I know other people use those. Um, I have a new air filter. There is under here a pressure regulator, just down here. Again, very hard to see, sorry. And it's one of the glass sediment bowl ones, which has a little paper filter in that. Spring-loaded paper filter, I've got that. And if we go around this side, you might see um, that down there is your oil canister. And you can just see it's red, actually. So I have the uh, paper element filters for that. So I've so far been buying stuff from uh, parts from uh, Classic Alpha in the UK uh, who have been really good. They, they got me out the bits, uh, those filters. I think I had them in a week and I ordered the Clutch Master and Slave Cylinder flexible hose between the two 
couple of circlips because the the slave is actually held in by circlips and uh, they're already on their way um, the last thing is I think they cleared Frankfurt uh, this morning our time so we'll just turn him off so and they've yeah they cleared Frankfurt this morning our time so hopefully they'll be here by the end of this coming week because I've got fr Thursday Friday off and I'd like to get that clutch master and slave changed and that way I can then uh, take it down to my local garage and have it inspected for our, our classic registration system which again I'll just show you for those that don't know cars over 30 years in New South Wales and it's similar the states all have something similar have this historic plate which is a very limited use but it's actually not bad it's 60 trips per year via a logbook and the logbook is carried in the car so each time each day and it's actually 60 days because you only fill it out once each day so you know for instance if i was going out in it this morning i could fill out the logbook take it out go to wherever i needed come back you know have lunch at home or, and then take it out again in the afternoon on the same one and that costs 46 dollars per year now it's it's a it's dearer the first year because you actually buy that number plate um so little marianne the diane she's on full new south wales rego at the moment there but she's about to um that expires at the end of august uh 27th 26th of august 20th of august something like that oh 20th of august that's the day i get my second COVID shot there you go my astrazeneca shot anyway um and uh, i'm going to put uh marianne on on club plates as well and that way i save a lot of money because at the moment to register even this at, at you know 900 kilo, 600 kilos or whatever it weighs is still six hundred dollars a year uh registration and the third party green slippers we call them here um they're each over just about three hundred dollars um so yes and then there's the new everyday car really good really like it but yeah don't touch them <laughs> i don't work on them don't play with them anyway uh so that's it so that's introducing kenneth the alpha i hope you liked it I'll try and get this up pretty quickly. Um, any questions, I'll hopefully answer them all for you, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye.